Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight I would like to do a unboxing of a deck of cards that was recently gifted to me. It is Diana Cooper's Archangel Animal Oracle, still in its original wrapper. And so we'll just get started here. Cut open the plastic. Um, this was actually gifted to me by a dear friend for that, you know, thing that they do when you cycle through the year and something to do with your birth, and all, you know, all that fun stuff. The things that those of us that hit a certain age just don't care about anymore <laughs> or try to. Um, but, I'll be brief. So, this is a deck actually that I've kind of looked at for a while. I just hadn't quite decided, and then the decision was made for me, which is awesome. Uh, inside the t lid, it says, Open your heart to the archangels and animals. Be inspired by their love and guidance. Which I do appreciate about a lot of the Hay House um, decks. They do have little notes or sayings or something like that inside, which to me makes them even cooler. Um, you know, prerequisite little book that goes along with it. don't like the paper wrappers because you can't put the cards back in them afterwards so that'll get taken off here so back of the cards first obviously it's kind of a cool design though it's almost like a Met not metron cube the flower of life with the stellar cross in the middle of it or solar cross and then it's, it has a couple of different uh, they're probably Zodiac. I'm not really good with the stars, but there's that one up there. Up there, There's that guy right down there. So you got a little bit of that. And then the, the first card, I believe these are alphabetical. Yes, they are. It is Ant, and it's a co -op, cooperate for the highest good of the community with Archangel uh, Premenilic. Premenilic, yeah interesting name have some new angels I'm gonna have to probably research now um, of course we have the cat be relaxed and independent with Archangel Raphael and we have a hedgehog that's pretty cool uh, be a magnet for light love and joy with Archangel Gabriel and I will say I like the way they have kind of an etheric quality to the decks um, Llama. That's interesting. <laughs> Set clear boundaries and enforce them with Archangel Camiel. Which, it's kind of cute that Camiel's kind of a loving angel and they have the llamas kissing. Uh, we have the rabbit with recognize your significance, also with Archangel Gabriel. And the rabbit has got such a focus on the heart center. And it's almost kind of like a Kabbalistic cross type design or thought pattern going on there. And up in the corner, you have the unicorn, which is blessing the situation, which is pretty cool. And then we have uh, sheep act with fortitude and cooperation, archangels Gabriel and hope. That's pretty cool. And the blue rose there on the front, that's, per that's just so gentle. And sheep are so adorable until they get bigger and start to headbutt you. <laughs> uh, turtle, be joyful and trusting with archangel uh, jewels. And there's like little, is that sharks up in the corner? Nope, dolphins, sorry. Dolphins up here in this corner. And I like the way there's kind of the swirly flowy move to them, so it feels like there's some motion behind it. The last card, that's interesting. The last card is Wolf. Be independent, but work together with Archangel Zeriel. No zebra. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Um... And of course, in the little booklet, there's always going to be, and I haven't, I literally just opened this, but I'm just used to these, the Hay House um, books. The first part introduces you to the deck, the ways to use them, one card, three card, um, and there's a seven card spread in this one, and then it goes straight into the interpretations of the cards. And then, in the end, it talks about the artist, which was uh, Marjolaine C 
Krushed. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, and Diana Cooper is, of course, the one that receives the vis visions, and she's the one that gives the meanings. And as I do with this particular type of deck, uh, we'll go through and do a quick little prayer and then do a, just a sample reading just to kind of get a vibe for the cards, see if they want to talk to me or not. We'll go through the book as well as we go just to see what the book has to say and compare it to how they're chatting to me personally. So, um, dear archangels and animal spirit guides, please bless these cards and give us the message that we need for the people in, that are watching this video today. And then we start to just give them a couple of cuts. Um, and there's are people out there who <laughs> like to do the reversals. I do not, so I cut everything upright. Uh, and that's a personal thing. I know some people who are very adamant that you have to do reversals. And to those people, then yes, you have to do that. But the reality is the tarot will give you, and the oracle cards are very similar in this aspect. They will give you the messages that you need to hear in that moment. And in my personal experience and in the people that I have read for, it's, it doesn't really matter what direction the card is. I've had reversal cards show, uh, excuse me, show up in my readings that I don't put them there. They just show up there. And they have these really beautiful positive messages which generally a reverse card is the opposite of the original me message, so that should tell you kind of the idea of the cards. But other times, no reversals, and you'll still end up with a very thorough, very clear, clean message, but it's because of the cards are going to be the face of the message from God, Source, Divine, and it really doesn't matter if it's upright or reversed. There's, like I said, there are purists out there that demand you shuffle your cards so they have reversals. But in the reality of life and the reality of actually doing this type of work consistently over time, you can. That's fine. But you don't have to. And for me personally, it works better if I don't. So <laughs> um, so we pulled a couple, well, a couple, pulled three cards. Just to kind of do a general reading here. Let me grab a drink. And I did, like I said, the artist who did the designs on this are super cool, and I have to give huge props to that. And I have another couple of decks of Diana Coopers, and they're all just really cool, in depth, generally really chatty information, too. So let's see. We have the camel. Be forbearing and patient with Archangel Jophiel. The camel lives in really harsh environments, and this is one of those things where you can put up with, not so much put up with, survive a lot. It doesn't mean you have to, but there's a resilience that comes along with that is what I'm getting, and that also leads to positive outcomes. That leads to being able to traverse the desert. Um, camels... <laughs> From what I remember from years ago when I was looking into them, they have a really unique eyelash that can block sand but still allow them to see really well, which is pretty cool. Um, and so it's being able to see through the chaos is what kind of the imagery that I'm getting. Let's read the book. Camels incarnate from Lukume. The ascended aspect of Sirius. They carry much wisdom and are waiting patiently to share this with humanity. They will download this to us as we become more tele telepathically receptive and are ready to progress into the golden new age. As camels move from the meditative empty deserts to noisy chaotic towns, they are learning and teaching about balance. They also are transforming lower frequencies into light. Much sacred knowledge from Lakume is contained in their divine blueprint and they pass this on they pass this into the golden fifth dimensional ley lines wherever they go they are helping to maintain the grids for us camels are demonstrating to us to use resources wisely they have learned to conserve 
and what they have and use with discrimination so that there's enough for everyone. So then she goes into a little guidance. You are blessed to receive this card and its wisdom. It suggests you hold the golden wisdom within your divine blueprint and your life has a plan that you have contracted in the spirit world coming in to share with humanity. This path calls you to practice patience, forbearance, and humility. You may feel ahead of your time. You can sense the light, other sense the light you carry and react to it in different ways. So kind of heads up to be cautious there. Uh, if you do not recognize who you are at your core, your guidance is to sit quietly and learn. Uh, and you call on Archangel Jophiel to help you connect to that with, because he's the angel of wisdom. And I have talked about him in previous videos, so you can check those out if you're interested. Uh, it also helps you to attune to your true self. So the camel is, <laughs> you can get through a lot, but I didn't realize that they bring in that much divine energy as well. Mm. As uh, divine energy tied into that, that's pretty awesome. And that the fact that they are grounding fifth dimensional energy back into the planet as we're going through this shift from um, the third density into the fourth density, we're shifting an entire planet and all the souls with it into this higher frequencies, all the souls that are ready for that, I should say. Uh, the camel seems to be a very important one because he's he or she is going to help anchor the dimensional energy, which is going to ease that shift into the density shift. So our second card is the butterfly, ready to transform it with wisdom, angel, archangel, preminelic. Prem okay, so <laughs> just from where this is set up so far, this is kind of funny. The camel anchors energy, sets us up for transformation. The butterfly is all about transformation. The butterfly is that bursting forth of the creative wisdom, the creative knowledge. It also is a reminder of your past that things in this moment may not be great. And that's that's understandable. But you are projecting into something that is more powerful, more beautiful. And sometimes you have to turn yourself into a bowl of jelly and hide from the world to be able to actually bring that beauty out. Um, most people will call it the dark night of the soul. Um, <laughs> hate to burst anyone's bubble. You're going to have several of those as you go through life. You're going to have usually one or two really big ones where your life kind of turns up and shakes the snow globe and possibly breaks it. Have to start over. A lot of big things can happen in these generally one or two big pops, but you're going to have other ones that come up that are challenges to make sure that you're actually know where you're going. So let's see what the book has to say. <laughs> Gets a little intense and philosophical there, sorry. Uh, butterflies are from Orion, constellation of wisdom. They're fifth dimensional insects. So they're already elevated. That's pretty cool. Uh, they're messengers of the angels and their auras contained angel codes that help you connect with beings of light. If a butterfly flutters near you, it may be bringing a message uh, reminding you that you are loved. Part of their sole mission is to bring joy. Butterflies go through incredible metamorphosis from egg to caterpillar, and a lot of us are working towards that caterpillar or in the cocoon mode. Uh, but then they turn into butterflies where they spread their wings. They main, their main sole mission is to demonstrate that change is possible and so is massive spiritual growth. That's pretty cool. Um, their service is to pollinate through a lesser degree more than bees. So to a lesser degree, oh, sorry, to a lesser degree than the bees. So bees are number one in the pollinating family. Butterflies are probably in the top five. Because <laughs> weirdly enough, flies, gnats, and things like that are up there as well. So um, guidance. When you receive the butterfly, you're advised that it's time for profound transformation. You are ready to emerge from your cocoon. Do not rush. And that's important when you're dealing with, side note here, or part of the video, who knows. <laughs> uh, when you're dealing with the dark night of the soul energy, 
you will have moments where you just want it to be over. Are we done yet? I am tired of being an emotional wreck. And even if you're holding it all together, especially if you're a male watching this, your tendency is to try to shove that back. Inside, you might be screaming, crying, carrying on. Outside, everyone's like, oh, he's fine. But there comes a point, generally just about the halfway point in most Dark Knights, where you're just done. I don't want to do this anymore. Please make it go away. And all of a sudden, you'll have this light that starts to come through. Generally, it's one of your guides, guardians, or the divine itself coming in at that point saying, we're here. This is something that you had to understand and process. Now you see what wasn't working, and now you can start to clean things out. That's when you start to crawl out of that dark night. But you really do have to reach that point where I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. I have got to get away from this. Things are not working. And that's when you start to have that butterfly movement where you're actually like trying to crack out of your chrysalis. So, but you can't not, you cannot rush this particular aspect. There's other parts of the spiritual process where you can start to like force things a little bit. But when you're going through this dark night where you're the puddle of jelly trying to stay away from the world, you can't rush that. If you rush it, you can actually kind of damage your spiritual journey. And that's when you get into those people who are hateful or spiteful. Oh, I can't believe I was ever. Calm down. <laughs> you're the one that rushed things or pushed too hard, not the spirit part. Uh, this is also a time of relaxation and calm before you spread your wings. Use this period t to do a life review and help you decide what you need to change and what you need to keep. Remember what the process that this process is inevitable. You will emerge as a different spiritual person. And see the world through the eyes of expectation. You are an emissary of the angels carrying angel light in your energy field. So the butterfly actually has some really good energy there. And a little side tangent again. From my personal journey, one of my biggest dark nights um, literally changed everything about how I viewed the world. People around me <laughs> for almost two years, two years after I kind of hit that wall of I can't do this anymore. This is, there's a problem here. It, I have got to fix this. I have to, f one thing or another has to happen at that point is how, where I was at. It was not pleasant. I was in a deep, deep, deep state of depression. And I had a very life-changing event, massively life-changing event. Some people's are very dramatic. Other people's are more subtle, but the event changes you in such a way that everyone around you notices some people are really excited about it like ooh, they have gotten better that's amazing i wonder what happened other people kind of in my situation or the way my situation went they were horrified because i went from being outwardly this one specific thing but inside i was <laughs> miserable as all get out after i had that period of time and for the next two years, I had family members who would not have anything to do with me because I had changed that much in a window of time to them. They saw it was like an overnight thing. It had been going on building for a while. <laughs> then you finally kind of burst out of that and you're like, what was I thinking? And now, many moons later, <laughs> things have gotten better. And most people today, from the new me before till now, they can't quite put their finger on what's different, but there's something much better about this person than that person. That person was fine for everyone else, but that person was not me at my core. And that's something that everyone goes through, and I do, and I would like to at some point do an entire video or two or three <laughs> on shadow work and kind of go through that journey. It's a very personal experience, and that's the reason most people just glance over it because they don't want to get into the mud. And you're getting into the mud when you get into shadow work. It's not pretty. It's not gentle. It's not nice. It is brutal. It is raw. It is visceral. But it's necessary. And that's coming out of it, though, you are the butterfly. You've went through hell, <laughs> but you come out on the other side shining, and it's amazing when you come out on the other side. So... 
our last card, and we'll wrap this up, is the snake live according to your divine essence, the elemental kingdom in all its forms. Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, all five. So <laughs> when you look at this, you go from the camel, kind of figuring out who you are to the butterfly where you come out of that dark night, and the snake is saying live authentically. The snake doesn't give in nature, because I used to have a job where I was out there all the time. Snakes don't care who you are. They don't. They don't. They really don't care who you are. Don't step on them. They're very, very uh, loud about such things. And so, in this state, when you go from being trying to understand, coming into balance, learning who you are with the camel, bursting out of that cleaning period and that resetting period of the dark night as the butterfly, the snake is how you're moving forward in life at this point. And it's very clear that it's you're done. No more living for somebody else's th thought concept uh, illusion that they had painted on you. you they can still have that and they're going to have that and do you not don't think that they don't I still have people today that I don't associate with a lot who still want me to go back to being that person I was many moons ago they can't accept that I have shifted that I have grown and that I am something completely different now they can't that's on them that's fine but when you start to step into snake slash dragon energy, when you're really stepping into yourself, you're living authentically, but you're living with the code of the divine. So your ethics, your morals, your beliefs have shifted into a higher frequency, but that also means that you're living in accordance with your higher self. And when you live like that, you don't harm other people. You don't need to. There's really no reason to. They know that there's something about you that's different that they don't want to play with, which is snake energy, because there's you can deal with it, but you don't need to. You can literally walk through life and just be yourself, and people are going to be drawn to you because they like that or repulsed by you because they're like, uh-uh. So let's see what the book says. <laughs> uh, snakes come from many universes, bringing their light and wisdom with them. They step down to Earth through Neptune, that's interesting. Where they collect the keys and codes from the Atlantis and Lemurian cultures. When they become physical, they crawl on the ground and spread information so that anyone can... Can't quite turn the page without having my hand <laughs> uh, access it. And they are closely connected to Hollow Earth energetically, bringing up ancient knowledge and the records of history within the planet. Snakes are messengers who bring warnings or remind you to look beyond outer appearances. Often they bear good news and that change or transforms us on its way. They herald the expansion of consciousness, which inevitably re is revolutionizing your life. All reptiles carry the orig original divine blueprint or essence they received when they were created. This offers them power and purity, and it's why snakes are seen as such powerful beings. You're asked to be aware of the snake because it's bringing you a message as part of this. And it's also saying, are you ready to shed your skin and move into something different? The energy with the snake are those little dark nights where you have those moments where things need to shift a little bit. It's not huge. It's not world changing for you. Um, Cause that's the cat, that's the cocoon, the chrysalis aspect of the caterpillar to butterfly. Everything changes in the big ones, everything. And when you come out on the other side, you're a better person, but you're exhausted. I, th that period of time when I came out of it for two years, everyone was trying to figure out who I was. I knew who I was. I didn't want to be around people. It took everything I had at that point to even just go to the grocery store because I was so sensitive. It, it blew open a lot of the <laughs> energies that I had tried to close down to be this other person. So when you go through those really big, deep, life-changing events you'll know it's not a I might be going through one no <laughs> the big dark nights you'll know um, but the snake the shedding your skin those are the little ones and those will happen frequently some people have them every year some people it's every few years most of the time you won't notice it as an outside person but inside you're noticing that you're going through some stuff I almost said almost said a PG word <laughs> PG 13 word um, 
On the other hand, this card may be offering warnings. Can you trust the people around you? Look beyond the surface. Trust your instincts. Remember to call on this magic if you feel you need protection, etc., etc. So, um, I will probably start cycling this one into some of the uh, monthly readings as we go along. I do really like the art style. It's very etheric, very dreamy. This deck actually is pretty chatty, which is cool. Um, and the message is, when we start, we'll probably start just using at least the basic levels of what's in the book so we can get an idea of what, how Diana sees the animals, but then we'll go on to um, what the card's saying to me personally for the people who are watching. With that, I will let you guys go. Have a great rest of your evening, day, week, whichever you see this. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video to let me know and comment if you have ever used this deck or if it's a deck you'd like to start seeing me use more frequently just to kind of mix things up a little bit. Um, with that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.